I'll start off with um, a poem from uh, Inner Cities of Calls. A brief, informal history. For us, there was never a Harry Houdini who escaped the boxes or be from behind the Bureau of Land Management fences. There was Jim Thorpe who ran in circles better than anyone else. He ran like a caged wolf. That was something we all knew. Great fists rose from the west, drifted over the plains, and pounded us with thunder as though we had always been corn, waiting to be reduced to meal in the unfurling fields. Out of the east, the real fists came. From within the snowstorm of lies, we heard tales of our own resistance. But we heard, too, the names of our fathers embossed in chrome on the fenders of cars, on the labels of alcohol, in the lonely glow of neon above cafes. We heard the death song coming from the sky, loud and piercing in the way a bird of iron might sound. And all our ghosts, those boys who went to war and fought like there was, there might be a freedom hidden somewhere in blood. They came back to our opened armed ghost fathers, their faces yellowed and parched by the long poverty of their lives. Our boys went back to being unneeded as a stone, waiting in the desert, a petroglyph for all that is lost. This poem is titled St. Helena. It's written for Mark Tony. You hear the voice of Federico Garcia Lorca weeping in every guitar, which are always of two minds, one searching for the strumming hands of a musician, the other desiring the, to sing for everyone and does not care if it is discovered by the clumsy feet of a Galapagos turtle, which reminds you of Napoleon Bonaparte in exile, where he took to standing on the back of a turtle one sailors had brought to solve the entire loneliness of the Atlantic Ocean, because the turtle was so adept at ravaging the emperor's vegetable garden. Napoleon had finally reached a compromise with something. He rode standing on the shelled back in windswept mornings, hand in vest, reading the great philosophers. To his reptilian companion, at night, after the turtle would eclipse in heavy underbrush, the trundle over the forge of garden. The emperor would weep, having lost everything, again. Even the slow-moving turtle moon, with its wide O mouth, mimicking the singing face of a weeping guitar. Genesis and Retrograde. We started in paper boats. Ambitious as naps. We were minutes and hours, our longitudes spreading tendrils beyond the boundaries of keys. We saw the world as something waiting for us, but that was just our expectations, pinpointing to a particular coordinate. We reduced the planet to a scale of a globe, smaller than a human heart. Whole. She believed in the power of positive thinking, hence the blindfold. Hungry as she was, she performed her nightly ritual, starting with setting the table, plate and utensils resting on the flat table adorned with the cruelties of lax fruit. An empty jug of wine, 
its green glass dinged with dust. She puts on her black dress, the one saved for special occasions, brushes her hair and slips black fabric over her eyes, tying to the behind her head. She sits at the table, lifts the knife and the fork, the prongs sliding, puncturing the air above the plate. Then the blade slices the emptiness. The shadows on the surface of the colored ceramic glaze tell their own stories of uselessness and need. She raises the silver to her mouth and makes the motions of chewing. The bottle watches with envy, desiring lips for the breath of its own tune of vacancy. She believes in small prayers whispered throughout the day. She stirs her mind against obvious negativities. Even the smell of someone else's dinner wafting into the room. Yeah, you're blue. <laughs> Legitimacy is so chummy. First thing, everyone presses the room to handshake the perimeter like a grass snake. The clammy waiting to get their hands at you. Go on, handy swipe boy. Give them a little wink. Listen, you tell them what they want. Get, you get it, and you are kind. Maybe everyone wins the big contract. Maybe we could be all of these stockholders. What do you say? Calluses only show on the outside. You're one of those guys. Never built a muscle, but pillowy hands. Say hello. Say let's do business. I've always loved you. Like a wallet, you know. <laughs> Natural lemons. All day the owl is dreaming of a crow. Dreaming of a crow. Dreaming of a crow and his war call rushing through the pines, and the owl opens her mouth as if to say, wait, wait until nightfall, until nightfall when the crow's own blackness is not enough to hide him from her keen eyes. All night the crow is dreaming of an owl, dreaming of an owl, dreaming of an owl, and a battle screech so close it could run through his dark body and sever his spine. His mouth moves in silence. Wait, wait until daybreak when the owl's great camouflage cannot protect her from the murder of crows. In twilight, the owl and crow are praying to live, praying to live, praying to live in the long hours of hunting. They do not fly nor tempt the other into unknown time the orange territory of conflicted light. They bide, bide in their pine churches with their songs to a god who would favor their feathers over the others. Right. Finish with one more. King of the city. The city vibrates, the city purrs. Prospero has taken to dividing the future with scrabble tiles. He reclines on the bed in his penthouse, the afternoon sun picking up speed before its inevitable crash. The smell from the wharf wafts through the window. On the street below, a drunk in tailored suit argues with a doorman 
about a dream of great ruined cities in the West. People sound to Prospero like cartoon characters. Someone honks a car horn as if to signify the start of the great migration north. There is a screech of brakes, the pounding on the hood, yelling and more honking. San Francisco is beginning to crumble into the sea. It's because Prospero has messed up the tiles again. At the curb, someone comes to a rumor about a rain of toads. People on the street are strutting with a hip-hop gait now, suggesting something great but final. It's Christmas Eve. There's not another scrabble set left in the stores. The city's veins are transing with traffic. Lights smudge, a fog creeps in and through the sunset district. The cartoon men have everything Prospero ever wanted or thought he desired. They're laughing, belting out carols as they huddle around the garbage can fire, sharing a bottle. A fat three-fingered hand throws in another wooden tile, one at a time, Someone calls out X, and another 10 points go into the pyre. Thank you.